Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to show you how to configure the OSPF router ID. Now this is an optional configuration command. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you at least one reason why you might want to. So OSPF requires each router to have a unique OSPF router ID. Without that it won't function. Now you might want to have a router use a specific value for its router ID. Oftentimes network administrators choose a subnet and that subnet is dedicated to the OSPF router IDs. It makes the management of the network much easier. However, if you let OSPF follow its normal course when it, when it initiates and, and, and starts up, it may not choose the IP address you want. So you might have to tell it which one to use. So what we're going to cover is, first we need to understand the process of OSPF and choosing a router ID. It's pretty simple, but if you don't know it, you're kind of stuck. After that, we'll show you how to manually configure the OSPF router ID. And then we'll just take a look at a few verification commands we can use in order to confirm that that ID has been configured the way we wanted it to be. Okay, so when a router starts its OSPF process, it has to have a, a, a router ID. And so it's going to follow a three-step process in order to make sure it actually ends up with one, no matter what. The first thing it checks is to see if there's a configuration command actually telling it which ID to use. And this is the one that we're going to use, the router ID command. So if this is configured, the OSPF process uses this ID, and then it's done. However, if it's not configured, the router is going to take the IP address, the highest numerical IP address, from an active loopback interface. Now, a loopback interface is just a virtual interface, and once you enable it, it's always in the up-up position. It can never go down. So it's a pretty convenient thing to use for an ID because there's no way that interface can be affected by a link flapping because there is no associated circuit. It's a virtual interface. Okay, so the router will check to see, do I have any loopback interfaces? And if I do, take the one that has the highest IP address. However, if it doesn't have any loopback addresses, then it's going to go ahead and take a look at all of the interfaces that actually do correspond to a physical interface, and it'll compare them all, and it'll choose the one with the highest IP address. So you can see here, if we don't tell the router which ID to use, then it's really up to mathematics to determine which one is going to be our router ID, just the highest IP. And even at that, it's by chance. Do we have a loopback interface configured or not? If there's only one loopback, then it'll take that interface IP address. If there are none, then it'll cycle through all of the interfaces to find one. So if you don't want to leave this up to chance, then we have to go ahead and make sure that step one, using the router ID, is uh, configured on the router. And this is pretty much a best practice uh, because that way you know for sure which ID your router is going to use. Before we jump on the router to make the configuration, let's take a look at our lab. We have two routers connected with a serial interface, and they're using the IPs from the 172.16.1.0 slash 30 subnet. And we're going to focus on router A. Now, router A has two loopback interfaces configured, and these are the two IP addresses, uh, one on each of the uh, loopback interfaces. Now, if we did not do anything, router A would, by the process we just discussed, it would choose .253 for the router ID. What we're going to do is we're going, we're going to use the router ID command in order to force router A to choose the lower of the uh, IP addresses, the numerically lower IP address, uh, instead of the higher one, just to illustrate how this command will force the router to use the value you want. Okay? Okay, so on router A, first I just want to show you the interfaces we have configured, and you can see here loopback 4 and loopback 5 have the two IP addresses, so we'll force it to use the IP address on loopback 5. And we'll start off with the standard uh, required OSPF configuration, router OSPF1. And then the first thing we'll do is create a router ID. And that has to be in the IP address format, just like this. And then while we're here, I'll just create a network command. 
and we'll put that into area 0. So the easiest way to confirm the router OSPF ID is the show IP OSPF command. And you, here you can see it right at the top here, ID 192, 168, 255, 251. Keep in mind you could also use the show IP OSPF interface command. And here serial 000 has OSPF enabled and it tells you right here router ID and it's the same. Okay? Okay, let's summarize what we covered. We now know that the router is going to go through a process to find its ID. It starts with a configured router ID. If none is there, then it looks to the highest loopback IP, and if that is not present, then it takes the highest interface IP. Now our configuration command is the router ID command, and we enter a value after that. That is the sole parameter of that command, by the way. And then our verification commands are show IP OSPF and show IP OSPF interface. Okay, so that is how to configure the OSPF router ID. Thanks for watching.